<laughs> oh, no. So yesterday, I asked you to write me a new intro. You know, maybe retire the beautiful bastard line so teachers can finally show my videos in class again. And while thousands of new opening lines were submitted, the one that we're testing today is from the Yai man himself, Jax Films. He will not lead us astray, so let's try it out. Sup, you incels? It's your big bad boner daddy here with some tasty scoops of tube news straight from the source. Mmm. I mean, ah. Nope, 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 nope. Not messing with perfection. Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. It is Thursday, April 15th, 2021. Like the video, subscribe, because I'll be giving $5,000 to a brand new subscriber for the month of April. And let's just jump into it. The first thing we should definitely talk about today, easily one of the most requested stories, is this news involving a U.S. soldier who's now been charged after a video circulated online showing him shoving a black man in a South Carolina neighborhood. So if you haven't seen this, the footage of the April 8th incident was posted to social media on Monday. It shows the soldier, Jonathan Pentland, confronting the unidentified man and telling him to leave the neighborhood. The other man says that he's just walking through the area, and then this happens. I didn't hit you. There's a difference between pushing sure you. You're the aggressor, buddy. You're aggressive on the neighborhood. Someone came running out. Walk back. You better walk away. You walk away. You're talking to my wife right now. That's your wife? Walk away. I didn't do Walk away. Check it out. You either walk away or I'm going to carry your ass out of here. What do you want to do? You better not touch me. Or what? What are you going to do? You up on me. Let's go. Walk away. I didn't do anything to you. I'm about to do something to you. You better I start walking. Her. I do anything to her. You better start walking you right now. You come after me like that? I ain't coming after you. You're in the wrong, You're in the wrong neighborhood, mother. The man then tries to tell Pentland that he lives in the neighborhood, and Pentland then asks for his address, which he does not give. The confrontation continues with Pentland cursing, continuing to get into this man's face, and as he does, uh, the man says that Pentland smells drunk. It's also unclear what exactly led to this confrontation, but uh, in the video we do hear... You picked a fight with some random young lady that's one of our neighbors. Get out of here. Then why? Nobody picked a fight with someone random. All I heard was you fighting and her defending herself. Fighting what? Hey, come on. What's your name? Come on, you don't want no trouble. Right, so after this, the video spreads online. Many social media users condemning it as another instance of someone being attacked for walking while black. In fact, we even saw this leading to protesters demonstrating outside of Pentland's home. Those protests starting off peaceful, but deputies were then called after 8 p.m. because unknown individuals vandalized the house. With that, forcing police to shut down access to the area and removing Pentland's family to another location. We then learned as far as what led to this viral video is deputies saying they were told that a man approached several neighbors in a threatening manner and then someone asked Pentland to intervene. Also, so as far as the other man, there are two reports of alleged assault against him that are being investigated. But police also said that he has an underlying medical condition that may explain the behavior exhibited in the alleged incidents. But either way, police said that whatever happened earlier didn't justify Pentland's action. And in fact, after all of this, we ended up seeing Pentland get arrested with him ultimately being charged with third degree assault and battery. And so reportedly, if he gets convicted, he faces up to 30 days in jail and a $500 fine. And at a news conference, we saw Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott saying, we're not going to let people be bullies in our community. And if you are, you're going to answer for it, and that's what we've done in this case. On top of that, reportedly the Justice Department is investigating, and maybe one of the biggest things, Pentland's commanding general issued a statement condemning his behavior, adding that Pentland had, quote, brought disrespect to Fort Jackson, our army, and the trust with the public we serve. But yeah, with this story and the video, I'd love to know your thoughts and your reactions, actually both to the video as well as the protests and everything that we're seeing with this story. Then, in business news, I touched on this briefly on Tuesday, but the cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase went public yesterday, making a market debut of nearly $86 billion, with the stock price closing at around $328 a share. It came out of the gate at $381, shooting up to $429, then back down. Uh, in the early hours of trading this morning, it was around $330. And while Coinbase's $86 billion valuation is actually lower than what was expected, many predicting that it would raise squarely over $100 billion, we should note that Coinbase is already one of the biggest publicly traded companies in the country, cracking the S&P's top 100, coming in at 94th. Or with many supporters and believers in Coinbase, saying this is just the beginning, but at the same time, there are detractors. You have people like David Trainer, CEO of the investment research firm New Construct, saying that Coinbase has, quote, little to no chance of meeting the future profit expectations that are baked into its ridiculously high valuation. With him last week saying that Coinbase's value in reality should be closer to 19 billion. But hey, ultimately we'll see. The market decides what the market decides. Then in other business news, you had the Commerce Department reporting this morning that retail sales for the month of March jumped 9.8% from February, with this spike largely being seen as thanks to the most recent round of stimulus checks from Congress. Right, notably, March was the best month of retail spending since May of last year, which at that time saw an 18.3% gain following 
following the first wave of stimulus checks. But also, and I think this speaks to a degree of what's changing since places are opening up, we're getting vaccines. Uh, last month, the bar and restaurant industry specifically saw a 13.4% surge. Meanwhile, sporting goods spending rose 23.5%, clothing and accessory sales rose 18.3%. Also, there's a new shop to Franco drop very soon in the next week or two. Motor vehicles, parts, and dealer sales rose 15.1%. And on top of all that, unemployment claims this past week dropped to a new pandemic low with only 576,000 people filing claims, which still a large number, but comparatively small. I mean, what, just last year, we saw 6 million people around this same time filing for unemployment in a single week. It's also a significant decline from the 769,000 people that filed jobless claims last week. And it's coming in much lower than the predicted 700,000 jobs that would be lost this week. So it seems like we're doing even better. But as Diane Swank, chief economist at the accounting firm Grant Thornton said, we're gaining momentum here, which is just unquestionable, but you're still not popping champagne corks. It will breathe again and breathe easy again once we get these numbers back down in the 200,000 range, which is around the normal number we were seeing before pandemic closures. Right, so while it'll still take a lot of time to undo the damage from what we've all experienced in this pandemic, if we stay on the path we're on, things may rebound faster, which is an exciting thing for me to say because I, d I feel like I don't even get to, to tell you a lot of silver lining or hopeful situations these days. So hey, hope, but then the cynic, and my brain remembers uh, that episode of Ted Lasso where they're like, it's the hope that kills you. <laughs> Uh. And then finally, for business news, and it takes us to the world of online entertainment, we should talk about Ludwig Agron, because he has officially broken Tyler Blevins's, aka Ninja's, all-time sub record on Twitch. Right, and this coming after, I don't, I don't know if you've watched this, Ludwig just finished a 31-day subathon where he was streaming live for an entire month. And it was kind of this perfect ending to a seemingly out-of-nowhere genius move where he would add 10 more seconds to the stream for every new subscriber he got until he eventually announced the cutoff day this week, ultimately getting 283,000 subscribers, beating Ninja's record of 269,000. Also, with these crazy sub numbers, there's been a lot of speculation about how much money Ludwig made from all of this, but th that is something that's actually really hard to break down. Right, Switch subscriptions based off of the tier, they range from $4.99 to $24.99. Some estimates saying that just off of the subscribers, he made $1.6 million, though that's before Twitch splits. So you have places like Dexerto saying that, okay, he got $935,000 plus right after the post-Twitch split. Ludwig's also donating $365,000. His payroll, $177,000 for uh, people like his moderators. There are, of course, then taxes, though a lot of the, the people that are doing taxes are doing it incorrectly because they're not taking into account uh, charitable donations donations or what he's paying. And it's also not known how much he made from advertising at this time. So the place is estimating that he only made $200,000 from this. I have doubts it's that low. But also, I do want to know that this is me just talking about a main point of speculation and debate in regards to this story, because I think the money that he made here, actually, I agree with something that Ludwig himself said, whatever I would get paid is so much less valuable than the increased viewership and followers. He could have made no money and still gained in the thing that is most important, and that is community. Views or views, but it's the community that will carry you on their backs for the years and potentially decades to come. And there is no doubt in my mind that the shared experience that he's had with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people with this over the last month, that's, it's, it's the biggest thing. That kind of ends up being the ultimate truth of this story. Like, Ludwig could have lost money over the last 31 days, and it would still be a massive long-term win. And uh, I will say, moving forward, it'll be interesting to see if others do this because Ludwig himself said he will not do it again, but I would be genuinely shocked if we didn't see a rise in subathons. And then let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Vessi. You know, it is honestly so hard to find lightweight shoes that actually keep your feet warm and dry through rain, snow, mud, and Vessi definitely surprised me with these. Vessi makes 100% waterproof and snowproof sneakers that are incredibly comfortable, breathable, and actually pretty stylish. Personally, I wear both their Cityscape sneakers and their latest release, the Weekend Shoe, and their Dymatex material is dual climate knit that keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter, which truly makes this the everyday sneaker, even for the upcoming wet season. These shoes are perfect for running errands, the gym, going to the park with the kids, or even on muddy hikes. And with a weekend shoe, you can just rinse them off or even throw them right into the washing machine. It is that easy. Making it a fantastic gift for yourself or your loved ones. You know, get them now for the rainy season while they still have your size and you will definitely thank me later. But Main thing, go to Vessi.com slash DeFranco right now and be sure to use code DeFranco at checkout to get $25 off. Then we had a small chunk of the population losing their mind because White Claw is releasing an even harder seltzer. With this, instead of their 12 ounce can with 5% alcohol by volume, White Claw Surge will come in 16 ounce cans with 8% alcohol by volume, which 
resulted in a lot of people going, oh, so they're just trying to create Four Loco? Which, my response is someone that covered a lot of uh, original Four Loco stories, no. Right, for anyone that doesn't remember, the original Four Loco, I believe, was 23.5 ounces, 12% alcohol by volume, and it cost two. 50. Right, depending on your state, uh, just one of these was like four to seven beers, one espresso shot, and a Red Bull. Right, there's a reason that people used to call Four Loco regret and a blackout in a can. Then, remember the Ever Given? Right, it blocked the Suez Canal last month, which reportedly resulted in $400 million in lost trade an hour. Well, as it turns out, despite getting dislodged and everything opening back up, their story is not over. And that's because Egyptian authorities have now seized the ship. With reports explaining, an Egyptian court ordered the vessel's Japanese owner to pay $900 million in compensation as a result of losses inflicted when the Ever Given prevented marine traffic from transiting through the vital global trade waterway. With a bill also also reportedly including maintenance fees and the costs of the rescue operation. But for now, we'll have to wait and see how the story for the Ever Given ends here because you have the insurers getting involved. The ship's cargo has also been seized pending there being some sort of resolution. So yeah, uh, the Ever Given stuck, but this time in a different way. Then in really troubling news, and it was already a massive issue, a worsening issue, but, but one I think that definitely got even bigger because of the pandemic. The United States has seen a massive spike in the number of US overdose deaths, with more than 87,000 Americans dying from drug overdoses in the 12 months leading to September of 2020. With Axios noting that represents a 29% increase in overdose deaths for the months between October 2019 and September 2020 compared to the prior year, with the biggest spike in deaths occurring in April and May of 2020 when shutdowns were strictest. With one study finding that people use drugs more frequently during the pandemic and very big here often did so alone, putting them at a greater risk of dying from an overdose. And that's on top of things like reports saying at least 25% of syringe service programs reported having to close sites because of social distancing policies, with nearly half having to restrict operating hours. Then, I definitely want to mention that we are very close to the end of the trial against former officer Derek Chauvin for his role in the death of George Floyd. This after today, Chauvin informed the judge that he would not be testifying, he was invoking his Fifth Amendment right. His defense resting its case after just two days of testimony following the prosecution's two weeks. And then, as far as what happens from here, you have the closing arguments set for Monday, and then it's in the hands of the jury, and we, we all wait to see if they will convict him of the thing we all saw Chauvin do. Or rather, more specifically, will they convict him, and if they convict him, of what charge? Because Chauvin is facing a second degree murder charge, a third degree murder charge, and a manslaughter charge. And this is, I mean, I would say it's going to be an interesting one to watch, but it's a very big, stressful one to watch. Because obviously, yes, this is about Derek Chauvin, but also it's a lot more uh, for, for a lot of people in the public and as far as what the public response is going to be yeah uh, we'll likely see over the course of the next week and ultimately with this story and actually anything that stood out to you today i'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below because this is the end of today's show as always thank you for watching like and hitting the subscribe button all the good stuff also if you're looking for more to watch i got you covered with some more news or if you need something lighter that brand new podcast i did with call me chris but with that said of course as always my name's philip defranco you've just been filled in i love yo faces and i'll see you next time